Hi, I'm Dre. I'm your mindset coach and mentor at Change Zone, and welcome you to another one of our get togethers. Today, we are going to discuss three ways to make sure you finish what you start. As you get ready to set your news resolutions and you set some goals for the new year, right? New year, new me, all this stuff that's kind of going on. Everybody is excited about change, optimistic about their ability to accomplish these goals. And I just want to make sure that this year is your year. And the reason is very simple. Studies show that about 60% of people make a New Year's resolution each year, but less than 8% actually keep them, which means they actually make it to December 31st of that year, and they still have that goal intact, that new habit that they've created. So I want to make sure you are a part of that, and a big reason that that number is so low is because of the planning and the understanding of exactly what motivates us, what's going on, what we're thinking. All this stuff is really something that we just kind of overlook. We just jump in, belly flop in the pool, and we end up finding out that the pool's not quite as deep as we thought, and it doesn't feel that good to jump into a pool that's a little shallow. So we want to build that foundation. I want you to genuinely understand what it is that you're trying to change about your life, why that you want to change it, and ways that we can make sure you solidify these changes. If you're able to do this, build that proper foundation, then you will be able to set yourself apart from others and you will get those results that you were trying to get. Number one, I just want to make sure that you're being honest with yourself and we stop making excuses. Let's just go ahead, put all the cards on the table. This is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. And let's just be honest about it. Let's not sugarcoat things. Let's not say I want to lose weight because I want to spend more time with my kids and I'm going to go to their wedding. If you want to lose weight because of that, that is fantastic. But if you genuinely just want to lose weight because you want to be able to go to that class reunion or you want to be able to wear that bathing suit to, to the pool or whatever it is that's going on, just be honest with yourself. You don't have to create any sort of a reason that you think will be acceptable and will be uh, celebrated by others because this is a lot to do with just the fear of acceptance and the overall fear of failure when you aren't sure exactly what it is the reason that you're doing something it makes it really hard to find and pull that motivation out when things get tough because challenges are going to come challenges are a part of change it's just the overall Understanding that you want to get from where you're at to where you're going, or at least where you want to be, and it has a lot to do with changing the overall beliefs that you have. The beliefs that you have right now have created the life that you have right now. So if you want to change your life, then you have to change your beliefs. You have to be able to say, you know what, what got me here isn't going to get me there. And so I have the a couple studies that I actually read, and one of them talked about a way to get a 300% increase on the likelihood of you being able to solidify any change that you want to make in your life. And it's a very simple process. It is called an if-then plan. And all it is is a little bit of preparation ahead of time so that you're able to already have the plan in place that you're going to action anytime a temptation or anytime something kind of throws you off your game you are going to be ready so that you don't quit, so that you don't start procrastinating and start re uh, second guessing. You want to make sure that you're able to stay firm, stay focused, and trust in yourself. And the if then plan is very simple. All you're going to do is let's say you wanted to um, stop eating unhealthy. Like every time you go out with your coworkers, you always feel peer pressure to order something that you actually don't want to eat. So very simply in the if plan, you'd be like, if I go to lunch with my coworkers, and then you add the then to the plan, then I'm going to order a salad. And I know it sounds simple, and you're probably thinking, Dre, that's not going to work. But I'm telling you, if you prepare ahead of time, if you set the if then plan in motion, studies show that it will increase up to 300% the likelihood of you sticking with your goal. And the reason is actually very simple. This has to do with the idea that you're just going to follow the plan that you already have. It doesn't require any thinking and decision making. And that means it doesn't require any mental energy. I've already mentioned it to before. When you use your mental energy, it drains. It's an exhaustive resource. 
So the more times that you make decisions throughout the day, the less good decisions that you have. And if you've ever been up studying forever for a test, then you know at some point you cannot even figure out one plus one. And it's not that you just drain it and you actually know where the number's at, you just know by the results. And so it's no different when it comes to anything that you wanna do in life. If you're trying to be a more considerate person and maybe you need to schedule all your meetings early in the morning. And the reason is very simple, you're full. Your energy meter is full, your, your willpower meter is full. And anytime that you have to make a conscious decision, i.e. I'm not gonna do what comes natural, then it drains your mental energy. So if you wanna be nice and considerate because someone was a jerk to you and you're trying to change that around, well, that requires mental energy. So if you only talk with them around the end of the day, well, your energy is already drained, so you're going to revert back to what's natural. And that is clearly just letting them know that you could care less about them. Well, instead, if you have your interactions in the morning, or at least you automate enough of your life where you can save your mental energy for those afternoon interactions, it's going to go a lot better because your willpower meter is full. So if you just put the if-then planner in place anytime you're doing something, right? So if my leader ask me to change my schedule to complete something today like there's a new fire drill for the day then i will let him or her know that that moves the deadline for this project just the if they plan in place so as soon as it's triggered you know exactly how you're going to react and this is going to drastically increase your ability to accomplish and solidify that change you want to make in your life and so I really just want you to make sure that you understand that. Number two, we have that, you know, let's just sleep on it. And I know what you're thinking, like, no, Dre, I woke up this morning. I know that there's so much that I want to change in my life. And today is the day that I'm going to change everything. But that makes it really hard when you want to change everything overnight because you didn't get where you're at overnight. So you got to be fair to yourself and give yourself at least uh, half the time it took you to get where you're at, at least half, but I would say let's just give yourself the the entire span of time, however long it took. You know, like I'm, let's stay with the just eating healthy because that one's a little bit more visual that you can kind of see it. The idea that you made healthy eating decisions and gained, let's say, like 100 pounds. Well, that didn't happen overnight. That didn't even happen in one month. That took time. So for you to then say, well, I need to lose 100 pounds today. Well, that really sets you up for failure. That makes it very difficult. And whenever you are coming into the scope of failure, you automatically start procrastinating. And then when you start procrastinating, it turns into the death of your goal. And if you want to be able to finish what you start, then you have to be able to say, I'm going to be patient with myself. It didn't happen overnight. It's not going to change again overnight. I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm going to follow through to completion. And I'm going to make sure that I research what goes into making this change. I set a realistic plan in place with realistic deadlines. Because if you don't sleep on it, you often just brashly go into something like, I'm going to make this change and I'm going to do it now. And I tip my hat to you. But at the same time, I also want to make sure that you solidify the changes that you want to make in your life. And the best way to do that is to wrap your mind around the plan. If the plan requires two weeks of this, three weeks of that, a small investment here, meeting with this group, just understand whatever it takes for you to make that change. And it really helps you to absorb. You become able to see the result. You actually can see yourself following the plan, following the blueprint and getting the results. When you don't take that first step of making sure that you at least just think about it, sleep on it, really contemplate what goes into making this change happen, well, you end up getting discouraged very easily. Because what we naturally do is we see other people and then we just automatically think, I want that result. And they have that result so I can get that result, which is fair. But if you took a moment to say, well, what did they do to get that result? Well, now we're spot on. Now it's not just about being fair. Now it's about being realistic, understanding things. Again, procrastination is the result of you feeling that something is going to happen that I don't like. Whether that's failure, rejection, 
or just any old overall uncertainty. If you take the time early, understand the changes you want to make, understand your motivation, put the plan in place, set realistic expectations and goals and timelines. Well, now the fear of uncertainty is almost all but gone. The fear of failure is almost all but gone because you're following a proven plan that you have seen work and you know that it can work so it will work for you. Just devote a little bit of time in the early goings. Don't just jump in rashly. Make sure that you understand what it takes for you to solidify that change you want to make in your life. And you'll find that it will drastically increase the likelihood of you finishing what you started. And number three, you just want to make sure that you follow your core values. Your core values, we often end up misinterpreting what our core values are, right? It's basically, I would say, think of adjectives that you would use to describe yourself. So you could say, I am a creative person. I'm a considerate person. I'm a compassionate person. I'm an understanding person. I believe in unity. I like stability, structure, right? Things like this will help you understand some of your core values. And then you put the goal and the transition that you want to make against that core value. And if it checks off all of your core values, then you know that it's something you should go after. If you go and do something that's against your core values, let's say you were just chasing money. So you're like, look, I really don't enjoy rejection, but I'm going to go ahead and take a sales job where they say the conversion rate is something like 5% because they said that you'll make like 500,000 a year. Well, if you are someone who really enjoys connecting and interacting with people and you don't really like to be um, in any sort of an obstacle, then it makes it very hard for you to sell to people. And the reason is very simple. When you sell to people, sometimes they tell you exactly what they need. You offer them exactly what they need and they don't take action. And it's just one of those weird things that you, I don't really know exactly why, but we've all done it where we know exactly what we need to do. We know exactly how to do it. We've seen the solution. All we have to do is go grab it, but we just don't take the action. So in that sense, if, you know, for me, for example, as someone's coach, when people understand exactly what they want to do and what they need to do, and we come up with a plan to do it and then they don't do it, well, it's up to me to... Hold them accountable, which could be seen as being confrontational, but my goal is to help you achieve your goal. And sometimes that requires me to bring to your attention that what you're doing is sabotaging your ability to accomplish your goal. So when you're a salesperson, sometimes that means that you have to let people know that this is a no brainer. This is exactly what you asked for. It's exactly at the price that you need. And it does everything that you said you needed to do what what's the problem a they don't exactly know what they need and and maybe you're able to have some deeper conversations and help them realize that that's not what they want like that's why they're being apprehensive but a lot of the times it really is kind of that let's see what we can do that based on what you said you want to do and then okay so now you want to do this let's see what we can do based on what you want to do now so I, I say all that to say that if your core values aren't aligned with what it is that someone has to do to get that particular outcome, then you're going to find it very difficult for you to keep going. You're going to feel miserable in certain situations. And you just don't want to do that to yourself. You know, if you're someone who enjoys stability, who enjoys relationships, connections, and unity, then it'd be very difficult for you to have a job where you are by yourself on the road traveling 60% of the time. It's just very difficult. You need the stability. You actually like the structure of going into an office and there being some set standards and parameters and tasks. And you have to find stuff that's aligned with that core value. If on the other hand, maybe one of your core values is family, but the promotion that they offered you requires you to work like double the hours a week. So you can work like 80 hours a week. And it's going to mean that you miss everything. The baseball game, the soccer game, the jazz, tap, ballet. You're going to miss it all. Are you okay with that? Well, if you make the, if you make the decision and say yes early, don't be surprised that you end up dealing with stress, some resentment, exhaustion, 
Right? All these negative emotions and feelings are coming in because you're doing something that's counterproductive to your core values. So you just want to make sure you understand what your core values are and then you don't sacrifice them. Stick to your core values. You will find that there is more than enough money, more than enough opportunity in the world for you to make a living doing something that you enjoy doing that does not compromise your core values. And I know that I've dealt with lots of people where in the early goings, we were all sort of told that if you get the certain education, then you're going to make a ton of money. And as a result, there's a lot of us who make decisions based on this belief where we spend a mortgage getting an education and then we end up thinking immediately, I have to get a job to pay some of this debt off. I mean, I get it. I was completely there. When you have a mortgage of student loans to pay, it's one of those things where you're like, well, how do I have time to make any decision other than following the money? And I think that that's a fair and it's an honest calculation. And when that's happening, then you're, you're really dealing with just the fear of uncertainty and the overall fear of worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is, Dre, if I pursue exactly what I'm passionate about, nobody's going to pay me to do that. But I keep finding that that's not quite the truth. I keep seeing it over and over again when people are making livings doing what they enjoy doing all the time. I remember watching... Um, this TV show where they have like young entrepreneurs. I think it was the big idea with Donnie Deutsch. That was a very old show, but I used to watch that as a kid. And I remember some girl coming on there. She couldn't have been more than 10 years old. And she was talking about how whenever she went to the movie theater, they got popcorn and all the butter was on the top and there was none on the bottom. And long story short, she ended up creating what looks like a straw and it has holes in it. And it just, she just puts the, the butter in the straw and then it comes out little holes. And because the, the straw comes from the top to the bottom, now the butter is dispersed evenly throughout the entire container. And she ended up getting a patent for that. And it was put in a lot of movie theaters. And now, and now they're able to put the butter evenly throughout the bottom to the top of the container. And if she was talking to someone about this early on, they'd probably be like, come on, no one's going to pay for that. It's a problem, but it's not that big of a problem that people would pay for the solution. The movie theater is still selling the popcorn just fine. It hasn't caused any margin issues, so they're not going to pay for that. Well, they would have been wrong. And so what I'm saying is, is as long as you're true to your core values, then you'll find that you have that extra oomph to get across the finish line. Because again, you're going to find challenges, but understand these challenges are opportunities. If you are doing something that you don't really want to be doing, when you find a challenge, you're going to say that that's proof that you shouldn't be doing it. I remember that when I was going to join a fraternity in college, because the girl I was dating at the time liked that fraternity. And when I called them, they basically gave me a little bit of pushback. They were like, well, you're like a sophomore, so why are you joining a frat? Mostly freshmen join the frat because of, you know, the rituals and the hazings, et cetera, et cetera. And so they were basically giving me a hard time about it. And you know what? I just assumed that they weren't going to let me in. And I basically said, thanks for your time. And that was the end of it. I didn't make any more efforts to join that fraternity. Because I believe that they weren't going to let me in. But the true belief is I wasn't interested in being in that fraternity. Because if I was, that would not have stopped me. I'm like, look, I understand that it doesn't happen very often, but it happened today. I am an upperclassman and I'm interested in being in this fraternity and I'm going to do whatever it takes to prove you wrong. It really is just that simple. It's the beliefs that you have that create your actions, as I always tell you guys. So the belief that I had was I'll join this frat because this girl wants me to be in this frat. Not that big of a deal. I'm not super interested. So as soon as I faced any opposition, I just was like, mm, no, thank you. Obviously, this isn't something that I'm meant to do. You bring up excellent points on the fact that I'm doing it late. But if it was something I was genuinely passionate about, something I was genuinely interested in, something that went with my core values, there's no one that's going to say anything that's going to keep me from doing what I set out to do. 
And you'll find that a lot of the times when we're dealing with a lot of this stuff, that we're actually just subconsciously not all that into it. And that's what makes it really hard for us to keep going. So very simply, if you want to start something and finish it, you have to number one, make sure that you're being honest with yourself and stop making excuses. Number two is you're going to make sure that you sleep on it. Don't just run in without thinking about it. Make sure you have a plan, understand everything that goes into it. And number three, you want to make sure that you follow your core values. If it's something that you actually want to do because you want to do it, then you will be set to finish and follow this thing through to the end. If you were just doing this because society told you it was a good idea, because another person, a family member, or a significant other told you it was a good idea, as soon as you face opposition, you're gonna give it, you're gonna give up. You're just gonna be like, you know what? This isn't meant for me. So you just want to make sure that you follow these three strategies because if you do so, you will get the results that you want and you will be able to complete and accomplish the goals that you set for yourself each year, each month. You don't have to wait for the new year. You can do it whenever you want. Again, I'm always thankful for our time together. I'm Dre. I'm your mindset coach and mentor at change. If you have not already done so, like it, share it, leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you. I'm thankful for your time. Until then... Continue blessings on your journey to become the champion of your dream life.